Hello students. In the last video we have discussed regarding uh, the definition of robots, robot anatomy, the parts of a robot. Also we have discussed uh, regarding the different types of uh, motions and we have seen just uh, introduction to regarding the classification of uh, robot configuration. So in today's lecture, we'll be discussing all those robot configurations in detail, their advantages, as well as the disadvantages as and their applications also. So in the last class, we were discussed up till here regarding the introduction to the configurations, Cartesian configuration, cylindrical configuration, polar configuration, jointed arm configuration, as well as SCARA. So today we'll be discussing all these in detail. So first configuration which you're observing here is the Cartesian configuration uh, robot. So if you observe carefully here in this configuration as per the first picture, you can see they have shown already the motion of this robotic arms. First one X, Y, Z. So which means a type of robot where it has uh, three sliding joints. So you can see here the direction also are among directions here shown in either sides along x axis, either directions in the y axis, either side and the z axis. So three sliding joints along the three x and y z axis in three dimensional space. It is an a Cartesian configuration. So when we are having three dimensional axis, which means there will be two orthogonal joints. Already we have discussed regarding this one. So always if we are having three axis X, Y, and Z sliding axis, there will be two orthogonal joints. In this type of uh, configuration robot, as there is a linear type of motion along the three axis, they can start and stop very easily along this three axis itself. But the thing is, the motion takes place in the form of a sliding itself. If you observe, there are some of the advantages of this one. You can see here, compared to it is having a simple controls as it is moving in the linear direction itself, linear movement. We can have a high degree of mechanical rigidity. There is high accuracy and also you can carry out repeated operations, which I will show you in the side figure here. You can carry heavy loads, especially for picking and drop operations. And we, as we are having a simple linear motion in all three dimensional axis, it is smoother in operation also. So if you observe here, yes, you can see here, how it is uh, placing the objects from this one and to the other ring, other slides. So if you observe carefully how it's motion occurring, see, this is, it is picking and placing, this is the one motion. Second one, this is second motion. And third one here, this uh, particular side. So three axis, one more, one thing I will show you. It is removing and placing it first axis, this part second axis movement, and third one here. So, movement along the three axis. This is the peculiarity of this one. That is a movement in all three axis, sliding motion itself, and we are having two orthogonal joints for Cartesian configuration rover. These are the advantages as we are discussing. Apart from this, we are having some disadvantages also. One disadvantage is, as I was telling you, it is having the sliding action in all the three dimensional space, that is X, Y, and Z. It can develop a rectangular workspace, but this rectangular workspace it is limited to only particular distance. It cannot go beyond that one. So, which means the arm movement is limited. As it is developing rectangular workspace, it is occupying a large amount of space. That is, on the shop floor, the space occupied is larger. So, you cannot use a low ratio of robot size to operate a volume. So as I was telling you, even it is reducing the flexibility 
and applications as you can see it can pick and place the objects as you have seen in the previous video it is used for assembling welding for the machine and loading and unloading operations as well as to give some surface finishing also these are some of the applications where you can use this cartesian robot that is the cartesian configuration now moving on to the next cylindrical configuration so if you observe in the cylindrical configuration carefully it is having uh, two sliding motions and one rotational motion so if you observe here this is one sliding motion and that one sliding motion is here and already has mentioned the name of the joint also it is l type of joint it is having the o type of joint and here there is a rotation occurring which is in the form of an t joint that is a twisted joint so what you can see here <clears throat> it is having a two dimensional sliding motions along this one first one is a first sliding motion is here second sliding motion is here and these two slidings they are orthogonal to one another that is we are using o type of joints in the cylindrical configuration o type of joint then we are having uh, the rotation occurring along uh, this particular link we call it as a twisted joint along the along this one we call it as a tf type of joint or a twisted joint so this type of configuration we call it as a cylindrical configuration so here in the picture you can see here how the sliding is occurring <coughs> in the horizontal motion and the vertical motion sliding here you can see here this is occurring in the horizontal motion as you can see here this is along the vertical motion which is having a l type of joint as well as o type of joints now rotation takes place along this particular axis that is the twisted joint so generally this robot when we are using it is used for doing some of the operations which you can see in the side figure which i will show you right now here so as you can see here see rotation taking place along this axis yes you can see here it is keeping the object yes you can see here it is placing placing this object sliding along the two axis this axis sliding happens here now it is moving vertically downwards rotation and you can see here so this is the example of a cylindrical configuration so advantage if you observe compared to the cartesian configuration relatively it is having a larger workspace so as there is one type of uh, rotation joint that is a t joint we can you say that to program it is relatively easier when compared to the cartesian configuration and it is having high capacity to carry the loads also some of the disadvantages compared to cartesian configuration its a workspace volume it is lesser and it is developing a cylindrical type of work volume it also occupies more floor space applications we go especially we are using for loading and unloading operations for forging operations for assembly coating operations etc there we are using this type of configuration that is a cylindrical configuration third type we have the polar configuration so if you observe the polar configuration carefully here in this type of polar configuration you can see there is one rotational joint that is an r sliding motion l that is l kind of joint twist taking around this particular axis that is the t type of joint so what you can say that in this particular type of a robot that is a polar or it is also known as a spherical configuration robot it is having a sliding arm that is l joint this is a sliding arm l joint which is having a rotational base along with a pivot and it can rotate about a horizontal axis that is along this one rotation takes place on the horizontal axis that is r rotational joint r with also a vertical axis rotation happening along 
the T joint here also rotation happens along T joint. So you know very simple words what you can say that in this type of uh, robot configuration we are having two types of rotations occurring along the R axis and the T axis and there is only one sliding motion that we call it as a polar or spherical configuration. So the name itself is polar means rotation along the two axes. So one is here horizontal occurring along the R another one is horizontal along the R vertical along the T another one is sliding motion. So this is nothing but an example of a sorry the description of a polar or a spherical configuration robot. So if you observe here in the video also you can see here see here the arm is rotating along the vertical axis. Now you can see the sliding rotation along the horizontal axis and you can see it is moving downwards the arm is moving downwards rotating downwards. Yes. So this is uh, the example of how the rotation takes place in case of an polar or a spherical configuration. You can see here how the arm rotates. It is used for doing the welding work here in this particular example. So you can see how arm is rotating along this particular axis and it is rotating coming along the same axis and it is doing its task to lift the same option. So some of the advantages if you observe here when compared to the other tools it is having a simple for designing itself as it is having two rotational axis. It can be used for heavy duty operations that is good weight lifting the capabilities are very easily here. But the disadvantage is what we have here is the height of the vertical reach as we have two rotational axis. So the height of the vertical reach is very very less in this one because we are having only one sliding motion. Its applications, especially we are using for die casting, injection molding, especially when you are preparing the injection molds for the forging operations, when you are carrying different types of forging operations, and even for the material transfer applications also. These are regarding the polar compression robot. Next, we have a jointed arm configuration. So if you observe the picture carefully right now, here is one rotation along this particular axis R joint. Second rotation R joint along this particular rotation axis. Another rotation act, acting in the horizontal vertical direction, sorry, in the vertical direction that is along the T twisted joint. So, more or less, what you can say that in this type of configuration, we don't have any sliding joints. We are all having the rotational form of joints itself along the horizontal axis and the vertical axis. So here this jointed arm configuration robot it is mounted on a base which can swivel along the vertical axis you can see here already the swiveling here shown here this is occurring along this particular type of joint that is the T joint. It forms the base. Then the column top it is connected to a shoulder joint along a the rotation of along this particular one that is horizontal in the R axis in the R direction. Then it is connected to an elbow and to the end effector. So the end effector which is there it is there at this particular point and it is doing particular type of operation. So in the side picture you can see here this is the end effector. You can see this is the base which can swivel. You can see there are three joints. We have this, you can see how this particular arm is rotating in all the three directions. So we don't have any sliding motions, but instead of that, uh, rotation takes place. There are only rotational moments in this particular type of uh, arm itself. So if you observe carefully, yeah. One motion rotation here, and rotation here, third one is here. So you can see here how it is being done. So there is no sliding motion, see. So that is the reason that we call it as jointed arm configuration or robot. The advantage is it is also having a larger work volume. You can use for larger work volume spaces. Quickest when compared to all the other configurations. And the flexibility is also more, especially in this type of 
configuration disadvantages as you don't have any sliding motions here it is completely based on the rotational motions itself so the operating procedures are a little bit difficult when compared to the other types of robots and it is also more costly when compared to the other three types of configurations so as you are having only the rotational types of motions so automatically if you observe here in the picture also the number of joints and the components involved are more when compared to the other types of configurations this is the next type that is escara which is also known another one known as selective compliance assembly robot arm that is the scara so if you observe this scara carefully also it can rotate in the two axes you can see here one is rotation along this one both are in the vertical axis and there is one sliding motion you can see here the animation also how this rotation is being done and there is one sliding occurring here so this scar which you are observing here it is also termed by another name known as selective compliance assembly robot arm so it is also nothing but similar to the jointed arm robot itself but the problem here is the shoulder and the elbow rotational axis they are vertical this is you can see the shoulder as well as this one all rotation takes place along the vertical axis here the rotation of both the links of the of the joints takes place in the vertical axis also even the sliding takes place in the vertical axis which means the shoulder and the elbow rotations axis are in the vertical direction itself and the arm of the robot it is how it is rigid in the vertical directions so it is also having uh, some of the advantages and disadvantages let us discuss them here so the advantages you can reach to any point in space if you have discussed if you define the coordinates very easily compared to uh, other four configurations here you can have a larger work volume or you can say that there is a larger number of work space developed which means the floor space required for its mounting you can see here this much amount of only floor space is required so uh, when compared to other robots the floor space required for this one is very 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 less in nature and they are very much faster and clean also because we are having only two types of joints here it is also having some of the disadvantages one thing is we are having limited movement yes you can see that is a limited movement is here then it is expensive little bit when compared to other ones it is a little bit expensive you can say as you are having only fixed type of movements that is the rotation and the sliding movements if you are having more rotational movements as i told you in the jointed arm configuration also we need to control it very carefully that is the motions have to be defined very correctly otherwise it becomes very much difficult for controlling then some of the applications we can use for uh, especially for finished product inspection especially in the automobile industries manufacture of the fiber optics machine loading and unloading these are regarding this scara some of the advantages of robots what is the purpose of using these robots so as i was telling you in the industries we want to increase the production rate apart from that the quality of the product should be good safety purpose and the consumption of the product has to be done correctly that is the reason that we are using these robots second important thing these robots they can work in any kind of environments which means if they if they are working in the nuclear reactors or in the welding sections there are lot of more cases are developed so in those places we can use them very easily that is they can work in the hazardous environment so when they are working in the hazardous environment they need, don't need to have any type of environmental conditions which means they can work in the hot weather conditions cold weather conditions which means they don't want to have any type of environmental comfort they don't need to have any environmental comfort and another important thing is when a human being is working on the machine after working to four or five times when he gets tired there may be chances that the quality of the product may be damaged or the product may get damaged but here the robot can do repeatedly the same amount of tasks continuously with complete accuracy which means 
the repeatable tasks are very easy here and that is the reason that the work done is precision work at all the times there is more accuracy developed here when compared to the humans and this accuracy is so much that you can measure the quality in terms of even the milli or micro inches accuracy that is the accuracy of these robots so if as a single man you can handle around two to three robots at a time itself so you can yeah, and apart from that these robots they can work beyond the tasks of the humans also these are the advantages of robots apart from this advantages we are also having uh, some of the disadvantages what are the disadvantages let us see here these are disadvantages it is when we are defining the robot we should know regarding uh, how the what are the degrees of freedom in which what are the directions of the motion of this robot along the which directions it can work that is we should define its degrees of freedom and uh, whatever the distance we are putting it it is working upon those distance which means it is having a lack of decision making power so uh, important thing is we need to define the motions correctly that is a very 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 important point here then the robots they are having the capability in lacking regarding to responding emergency so uh, when any fire accidents happen the human beings they are responding that they directly move out of the uh, industries they switch off the, the other devices that is doing them directly the response but whereas these robots they don't have this type of response which means in those type of situations they are lacking behind then the real time response is also very very less here <clears throat> so especially when the accidents happen they don't know what to go do another important thing is the initial cost of this equipment it is very much higher so you need to design the robots you need to define their freedoms you need to define their programs so everything is <clears throat> having high installation cost also and the person who is working on this one he has to be trained careful regarding how these robots have to be set up for doing the work what are their limitations everything has to be trained to the persons which means we need trained workers for working on these robots this is regarding the disabilities of robots applications so especially if we go for applications in the material handling part especially i was showing you in the industries we are using for picking and placing the objects from one point to another point that is for pick and place operations then you can uh, take the parts from one of the parts and you can use for uh, uh, to palletize them or uh, unpalletize them also that is especially in the industries of the medicine industries we are using this one in the form of small pallets you can do them then you can uh, load the parts or unload the parts especially in the machines itself for removing or loading the parts from machine for doing the assembly work and you can do them with the help of some vision sensors or even uh, no vision sensors also you can use them then when a robot is uh, loading a raw work part to the process it can do even uh, the unloading of a finished part by itself itself so uh, therefore you can say that uh, see, they also play a very important role in a uh, material handling section of this robots second one is in the processing so many processing operations are carried on in the industries as i was telling you the human beings cannot work continuously in the welding section so uh, in the welding section also they can work continuously especially when uh, especially for doing the spot welding here where they can squeeze the metal parts to a higher extent and uh, they, with the help of using the electrodes so we ought to mean is that uh, spot welding can be done very accurately especially in the processing operations apart from that they can go for continuous arc welding for joining the metals by the heat generated by the electric work which means uh, to higher temperatures also they can work there without having any effect for the painting in the metal parts you can use the spray painting of any type of chemicals which doesn't have any impact on the machines we can use for cutting the materials or for drilling operations or any other operations also that is the water jet operations cutting riveting you can fix or remove the tools very easily and do the works at a continuous time that is rotating and the spindle operations apart from it you can use for even the adhesives and sealant dispensing part also we are using this one that is the use of the processing in the robots third important 
location is in the form of assembly and inspection. So and the metal or on the product has been manufactured before it is being sent to the market. We have to determine the minor flaws present on that one. So especially if they, when the, there are some, there will be some human errors developed, which may not be able to determine the flaws, but these robots, they can determine even the minor flaws also. And they can compare these flaws with the good part and the bad parts, which means inspection is done very, very accurately. So sometimes even there may be human errors, those human errors, they can be replaced with the help of these particular robots. As I was telling you, they can work in any kind of environment, even hazardous environment, they are working very much accurately. Repetitive tasks can be developed, so which means a one type of work it can be attributed utility without losing the accuracy and not destroying the quality of the product. It can work at any type, which means it can work in n number of shifts, or you can say that multi shift operations. And it can work continuously without standing for a rest, which means you don't need to have any go for rest when you are using the robots. So the robots they can work continuously. So these are some of the things which we need to know regarding the robots. Thank you, students.